the final face-off before Election Day, the vice presidential debate between Minnesota Governor Tim Walz and Ohio Senator J.D. Vance. What to expect and why it might be the most consequential VP debate in American history. Welcome to the No Spin Zone. Graph's Grievances starts right now. The countdown is on. Tuesday night, Minnesota Governor Tim Walz and Ohio Senator J.D. Vance facing off in New York City for their first and only vice presidential debate. The face-off coming just 35 days before Election Day and could very well be the last debate of the 2024 election cycle. Traditionally, the presidential nominees debate three times, twice before their VP picks and once after. But so far, former President Donald Trump has refused to debate Vice President Harris again after his last debate with her on September 10th was widely viewed as a win for Harris. Of course, Trump could change his mind at any moment and agree to another debate. But as of now, the 90-minute VP debate on CBS October 1st will be the last, and that is one of at least three reasons why the performance of Vance and Walls in the debate could matter more to the outcome of the election than ever before. Traditionally, vice presidential debates have little, if any, impact on the outcome of a presidential contest because, by definition, they involve secondary figures. But because the VP debate could be the last debate before Americans vote, it will be the last time most voters hear directly from the principals in either campaign. Essentially, both Vance and Walls have the opportunity to get the last word, no muted mics. And that could be extraordinarily valuable in a race that is neck in neck. Which leads us to the second reason why the VP debate with no live audience matters more than ever before. While national polls show Harris leading Trump by an average of three points, according to 538's polling average, in the seven swing states that will determine who wins the presidency in November, Trump and Harris are running neck and neck. Here you see the latest swing state polling from Bloomberg and Morning Consult. You will note Harris is leading in every swing state but Georgia where she is tied with Trump. But that Harris's lead in Arizona, Michigan, Nevada, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin is within the poll's statistical margin of error. So even the slightest impact the VP debate could have on swing state voters could radically alter the course of American history. Which brings us to at least the third reason why the VP debate matters more this year than ever before. Not only is Donald Trump, at 78 years old, the oldest presidential nominee in U.S. history, but Trump has been subject to two close assassination attempts in the past three months. Voters are unfortunately being confronted with a presidential candidate's mortality for the first time since the Kennedy assassination in 1963. And while how that might impact voters is unclear, this dynamic and the replacement of President Biden with Vice President Harris atop the Democratic ticket certainly elevates the profile of the vice president who would replace the president in the event of death, resignation, or removal from office. So what to expect from the two sons of the Midwest when they face off? By tradition, vice presidents are tasked with being attack dogs. The theory? Keep the presidential nominee above the fray, focused on what they will do for the American people while wet letting the VP pick get down and dirty, lobbing attacks at the opposition. But with Trump already the most ruthless negative campaigner in American history, Vance has resorted to trying to outdo Trump, the 40-year-old Yale Law School graduate, drawing attention to his for his incendiary misogynistic and racist comments, including calling prominent female Democrats, quote, a bunch of childless cat ladies who are miserable, and amplifying the false claim that Haitian immigrants are eating their neighbor's Pets. Vance also attacking Walls' misstatements about his military service, which Walls has apologized for, and flat out lying about Walls' 
retiring from the Army National Guard after 24 years of service to avoid being deployed to Iraq. That is not true. Vance's rhetoric on the campaign trail so far not resonating with voters. When he was selected as Trump's running mate in July, Vance's favorability was negative three points according to 538. Today, Vance's favorability rating is negative 11 points, lower than Trump or Harris. Meanwhile, Walls' favorability rating has remained in positive territory since he was picked as the VP. The former high school teacher and football coach having a net favorability of 9 points when he was selected and now has a favorability rating of 4 points. Unlike Vance, Waltz has largely used his time on the campaign trail to highlight his middle class roots and boost Harris. The first person on a Democratic presidential ticket in about 50 years to not be a lawyer, Waltz exudes the everyman and speaks simply about his state school education and youth in rural Nebraska. This, of course, in sharp contrast to Vance, who, while growing up poor, left his native Ohio behind to work in liberal San Francisco as a venture capitalist and write a best-selling book touting his rags-to-riches story. Vance's journey to the top of the Republican ticket coinciding with a rather opportunistic political transformation. Within the past 10 years, Vance questioning on tape if Trump was, quote, America's Hitler, calling Trump an idiot, and denouncing Trump as, quote, cultural heroin. Now, Vance, of course, stumping for Trump as a MAGA zealot and saying only Trump can save America. This about face on Trump, only making Vance a more adept debater as he has routinely had to defend his extreme MAGA makeover. So while Waltz certainly has more years of experience in politics as a former congressman for 12 years and now a governor for six years, Vance is a more polished public speaker. Both Waltz and Vance ironically chosen to help their running mates court white working class men. And it will be interesting to see how they utilize the debate. It will be up to the candidates, not the moderators, to check the facts of their opponents. Which means Walls will have a very challenging job as Vance has repeatedly made clear and even said outright he will not allow facts to get in the way of a good story. Yet at the same time, Walls needs to make sure he is communicating to the American people why Harris despite all of Trump's baseless, nonsensical attacks, is the right person to be president and why Trump is a threat to freedom everywhere. As for Vance, he may try to make a better second impression with the American people by presenting a positive vision for a Trump second term. But my guess is that Vance will double down on negative and try his hardest to paint Walls as a phony and Harris as an incapable DEI hire, neither of which is true and has yet to move the needle with voters. Whatever happens, you can count on a full recap and analysis right here. Thank you for watching Graphs Grievances. Let me know what you think. Please like, subscribe, share, and join me in the next one.